work. I want to talk briefly with you about a, an item in the world of credit that's been getting a lot of attention recently. Because of the mild but at least partially real crackdown on subprime lending after the global capitalist crash in 2008, the hustlers in the credit business had to find a new way to get around the even mild regulations and limits put on certain kinds of lending. And they found it as they always do. The new explosive kind of lending is personal loans arranged usually through the internet. They are, at least for the time being, relatively less regulated and controlled. Meanwhile, the mass of middle-class Americans is more and more in trouble with the incomes they get insufficient for the costs of education, medical care, etc. And so people in trouble turn to these easy-to-get internet personal loans. And I want to talk to you about it. Not about the scandal and the bubble that's building. We've been there before. This is just another rerun. The fancy big center banks lend money to intermediate finance companies who then turn around and give you that wonderful sounding loan until you look real closely at the fine print and discover that the interest rates are in triple, uh, double or triple figures. Wild interest rates, far beyond what is legal in the other regulated credit markets. I don't want to talk to you about that scandal because you know it. I want to talk to you about what it means economically when we have money lent at high interest rates to middle-income, working-class people. What that debt does is it redistributes wealth from the poor, from the middle, to the rich. It's important that we stop only thinking there's wealth redistribution when people like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren talk about taxing the rich and the conservatives all yell wealth redistribution. I want you to understand that wealth is being redistributed all the time the other way, from middle and low income people to the rich. And nothing does that more successfully and regularly than personal loans of the sort that are now offered in huge amounts over the internet. Here's how it works. The money provided to the internet lending companies comes from the richest people and institutions in the country. Wealthy people who buy shares of these finance companies, big banks who lend money to these finance companies, these are the rich. These are the institutions owned and serving the rich. And here's what they do. They come to strapped middle-class and working-class people and offer them a loan, say at 20, 40, 60, 80 percent. So let's be clear what's happening. The finance company gives you, say, $1,000. And at the end of the year, say, if it's a one-year loan, which some of them are, you have to pay back the $1,000 you got and the interest, which could be anywhere from $200 to $600, depending, and sometimes higher. So let's be very clear. The rich people give you $1,000 at the beginning of the year, and at the end of the year, you give them back $1,200 to $1,600. That is a redistribution of wealth. You give the rich more than they give you, and that redistributes the wealth. At the end of the year, you have less wealth than you did at the beginning, and the rich have more. So if wealth redistribution is something that concerns you, it ought to make you an opponent of the kinds of personal loans and other kinds of loans 
that are just hidden forms of redistributing wealth from the bottom and the middle to those at the top. Footnote. Back in the Middle Ages, feudalism in Europe, where the dominant religious institution was the Roman Catholic Church, that church prohibited usury. That was the word then for charging interest on a loan. And here was the church's reasoning. A person who needs a loan is a person in need. Otherwise, he or she wouldn't seek a loan. A person who's wealthy and in a position to make a loan doesn't have the same need, which is why they're in the lender position, rather the borrower position. And it is against Roman Catholic teaching, the clerics of that time said, for a person who doesn't have need to take advantage of the person who does by demanding back more than you give. It is good Christian behavior, said the church, to help a person in need. It is blasphemous to demand of that needy person that they redistribute wealth to the rich who don't need it. What an interesting idea hundreds of years ago and how pertinent it is to the wealth redistribution that is hidden by the everyday lending to consumers.